Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can do a day-to-night conversion inside of DaVinci Resolve 16 for video. So following these steps, the end result is going to look something like what you see on screen, starting from an original video clip like this, where it's clearly more of morning to midday. So let's get started by creating a new timeline. So I'll call this Timeline Day-to-Night Tutorial. And now I'm going to re-add in the original video clip to my timeline here. So in order to achieve the result you saw, we're going to need a little bit of a combination of the Fusion tab to add in hotspot lights and the Color tab for doing color grading, darkening certain areas. So in the final shot, we're going to want to make the sky even darker than the ground is going to be, uh, emphasizing that there's not a lot of light coming from the sky during nighttime. So we can actually start by making the sky darker with respect to the rest of the shot by creating another corrector node over here on the right side of the color tab. So I'm going to right click add node corrector and I'm going to take the import clip to create this corrector node. So in the top corrector node we're going to apply color grading to everything in the shot and then for certain regions, namely the sky and the ocean area, we're going to be applying another color correction, but only to those areas. And then we're going to fuse both of those clips together. So we can actually do the fusion right now by doing right click add and a parallel mixer. So I'm going to break the connection there with the output and I'm going to feed both of these corrector node inputs into this parallel mixer. And then the parallel mixer will create the final output. So pretty simple node setup there. So let's take this bottom corrector node and let's create a power window in order to make the sky area darker. So I'm going to use the curve selection. So I'm just going to left click to set the first point I want to create our area in and then go across the screen to find another good point for a pen selection. Then I'm going to make this go beyond the scope of the screen by putting an anchor point above it and one on the left as well, and then reconnecting it back down on the original anchor point. So now with this window selection, any changes we apply to this node are only going to basically apply to the sky. Um, also, I'm going to want to add some softness here, uh, and I'll do this in advance, so that uh, any changes that we make kind of hovering around this border won't be such a hard edge. It'll seem like it smoothly transitions the color, and it'll look a lot better. Next, for starters, I'll just go over to the color curves over here and the curves for the color. I will just kind of drop that down for starters. Okay, and the reason we're not seeing anything here is I currently have the bypass on, so I'm going to hit Shift D to uh, make it so that there's no bypass and we can actually see the changes we're making. So just by kind of lowering this down here, we can darken the sky without darkening the beach. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of softness on that edge there. So if I drop that softness back down to zero, we get a very hard edge, which looks terrible. So I would definitely recommend having a softness probably somewhere between five and ten. And for now, we can just keep it simple and leave it there. Next, I'm going to go over to the top corrector node where we're applying changes to everything. And I'm going to mess around with the color a bit. So let's start by going to the color curves over here. And I'm going to start by lowering the top end, basically darkening everything in the shot. And then I want to unlink the different colors, red, green, and blue, by clicking on this link over here. And go to the red and drop that down um, as, as much as you want. And with that, the green as well. And what this will make happen is that the shot will look bluer because we're de-emphasizing the greens and the reds in the shot. So we can also add a little bit more blue and purple to our image by adjusting the gain. So I'm going to take the gain and increase it slightly in the uh, kind of violet color range. So just a tad there. Since obviously when you have nighttime it's going to have more blues and purples in its color. And I think at this point the sky is probably dark enough but the bottom isn't. So I want to lower the overall shot even more. So I'm going to take this overall color and lower that down. I'm also going to lower the blue, take the red, drop that down further, and the green, drop that down further. Uh, pretty much until you think that this beach area looks good enough. Honestly, we may want to even lower these down a little bit further than that. So as dark as you want to make it, just make sure that your greens and your reds are lower than the other colors. So now the sky is way too dark compared to the beach area. That section. So I'm going to go back over to that node. Uh, in the bottom that's correcting the sky, and I'm going to raise all of those colors up a bit. So right around there looks more appropriate. 
So at this point, it might be fun to add in some moonlight in one of the corners. So we can do that by going over to the fusion tab. And in the fusion tab, we're going to want to take this media in and put a light between media in and media out. So we can do that by going up to the effects library in the top left hand corner, going down to tools and then effect. And you'll see hotspot as an option here. So we can left click the hotspot, which will create a hotspot light on our image. And we can drag that over to one of the corners, such as over there. And then we need to play around with the settings a little bit. So for starters, I'm going to lower the primary strength way down here so that that center area where the light's coming from doesn't seem like it's one single point so much. Uh, since the moon isn't actually in the shot. And we'll increase the hotspot size so that the area where the light is actually going to affect is larger. And I also want to change this aspect angle. So this should be in the direction that the light is going to go. So I'm making it kind of downwards towards this person, like a 36.5 degree angle. And then increasing the aspect, you can kind of see how you can send out a ray of light that brightens up some of the other areas in the shot. So I could make this quite large, something like negative four. If you ever want to see how this effect is looking in the final result, you can just go over to the color tab. So you, so you can see that this light brightens up this area in there a little bit. If you want it to be stronger, you can increase the primary strength again. You don't actually have to have the center area on the shot. You could actually take this and move it completely off the shot if you want, as long as your aspect angle is going to be angling the light uh, down here into your shot. So we can take a look at how that affects it uh, back on the color tab. If you want, you can also add in secondary strength for the lighting if you want it to reflect around in your scene a little bit. But I would not make the secondary size or strength too dramatic there. Just a little bit. So I think that looks pretty decent for our purposes there. So I'm going to go back over to the color tab and you can see how this lighting that's coming from up there kind of emphasizes parts of our scene in a cool way, adding a little bit of a glow to the center area here. And then the secondary light affects the bottom right hand corner as well. So that's just one way we can make our nighttime scene look a little bit more interesting. So we can hit shift D to see the original, shift D to undo the bypass and go back to the end result. And we can see if it looks dark enough for us. Okay, so I think one area we could make it look a little better is to lower the lines down on the window so that it's covering a little bit more of that ocean area. So I'm going to drag that down a bit, kind of so that it's more on the beach. And then the smoothing should be able to help take care of the rest. Okay, so one more thing we might want to do with the shot is lower the saturation down a little bit. So I'm going to go over to the saturation versus saturation curve here. It's the uh, last one on the list. And I'm just going to pull the overall saturation down just a tad for all levels. And I'm going to be keeping it roughly an even decrease all the way across the board there. Just to kind of emphasize the lack of lighting in the environment. Okay, so overall, that's the gist of how you could do a day-night shift inside of DaVinci Resolve. So you have your original shot in the daylight, and then your final result with the nighttime shot.